awesome to be here. Thank you, TKS, for having me here. So what we'll do today, I'll tell you guys a little bit about um, artificial intelligence. And I know you heard the word, and I'm pretty sure I missed the morning sessions, but I'm pretty sure every speaker touched AI one way or sort. Um, but what I would like to do today is like tell you what is artificial intelligence very briefly, and why should we care, and how can we get started with artificial intelligence. So just super quick introduction about myself. Um, I am leading the data and AI team at Microsoft Canada. I have data architects and data scientists working in my team. Um, we don't do research. We don't do all the cool products and research, unfortunately, but we work with our customers and help them build AI solutions for their own organizations. And uh, I've been at Microsoft for two years only, so still newish. Uh, before that, I had my own startup for three years, and before that, I was a lifelong student, did master's PhD in machine learning, um, and learned a lot. So, what is artificial intelligence? Um, there are many different ways of explaining what artificial intelligence is, but this is what, exp uh, not Expedia, Wikipedia says. Uh, intelligence exhibited by machines and mimicking functions associated with human minds, okay? And at Microsoft, we look at it in like three pillars. One is reasoning, the other one is understanding, and the other one is interacting. So reasoning is basically looking at the data and trying to learn and form some conclusions around that data set. The second part is understanding. Understanding is about interpreting the meaning of data. It can be voice data, it can be text data, uh, it can be images, it can be anything these days, right? There are so many different types of data that we look at. And the third piece is interacting. So how does this artificial intelligence is actually able to interact with human beings in natural ways, right? We know we're still not there yet. We're still working on that. Like, I have an Alexa at home. The most she can do is tell me the weather and traffic and play me a song on Spotify. But I'm hopeful we'll, we'll have more meaningful conversations in the very near future. So just a couple of points there around like the terminology, okay? Because we're, everybody's so excited about artificial intelligence these days. Everybody talks about artificial intelligence. Then I start hearing about all kinds of terminology, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, and we start using all those t ter um, uh, vocabulary as if they mean the same thing. Right? Just a little bit about that. So I look at it, when, when someone says artificial intelligence, I look at it as the bigger umbrella of all those technologies, right? And I always say, this might not be the real explanation of it, but in my mind, when I say artificial intelligence, I tell people, feel free to think about robots that you see in the movies taking over the world. They're so intelligent and they act like humans um, and they feel like humans, right? So it includes many parts, uh, many different technologies like natural language processing, machine learning, and all those like way of um, mimicking that intelligence, human intelligence. And artificial intelligence is not a new technology. It's been around since 1950s, but it's been always in the research labs. Um, the reason that we're able to see all those technologies and we're able to talk about these technologies because of all the data that we have available today and also the computing power that is available to everyone today. So it's almost like democratization of that technology layer is enabling artificial intelligence to get into our lives and giving us the uh, ability to speak about it in everyday lives. So machine learning is part of artificial intelligence. Um, the simplest, I don't know if many of you might know this or not, but one of the first applied um, solutions of machine learning is spam filtering. You know, you go to your emails today, and there's always that spam box or junk or whatever your email provider is using. Um, that is actually, in the background, there's machine learning. Looking at each of your emails and then deciding intelligently which is spam, which is not, and then putting it in the spam folder directly. And deep learning, the most recently um, talked technology. Um, I've worked on it for many years, and when I was working on it, it was called neural networks. 
um, and now we call uh, the technology deep learning, and that's been around since 1970s. Again, nothing new, but because, because of the, all the technical, technological improvements, we're able to um, uh, play with it in our daily lives. And today, deep learning is mainly used with, uh, for um, text and image uh, kind of data and classification of these problems. Where is AI today? It is really everywhere. Um, I mentioned Alexa already. I have one at home. Uh, Facebook um, has a huge AI research that they're working on uh, with their, many of their products. Uh, Google, you've heard of AlphaGo. You've heard of many of Google products. Uh, Microsoft Skype Translator is a good example of it. I don't know if you guys play with it, but if you haven't, like if you have Skype, you should totally go play with the translator. It's so fun. You can actually type in one end in English and the other person can receive it in Spanish, right? Or the other person can type it in Spanish and I can read it, read it in, in English. So you can actually communicate. And this, you can do this in real time with the voice calling as well. You can speak in one language and the other side can actually hear you in a different language. To me, it's so exciting. It is so amazing. Especially as a bilingual person, I, I really, I'm really looking forward to that technology that is being on our phones one day and it's really working real time so my Canadian husband can speak to my Turkish mother or vice versa. Or maybe not, who knows. Maybe it's good as it is today. <laughs> um, so AI at Microsoft, uh, what do we do with AI at Microsoft? Um, we look at it in like five pillars. We look at vision, language, search, um, speech and from the knowledge perspective, right? And I'll tell a couple of stories around the ones that I really love. So as I said, in my day-to-day -day job, like I work with customers and not always that I work on like super exciting projects, but in my personal life, I'm really, really passionate about AI for good projects. And that's what I want to talk about today. Um, if you ever follow me on social media, um, LinkedIn, Twitter, wherever you are at, my favorite hashtag is AI for good these days. So one of the um, problems that we're looking at Microsoft is actually looking at how we can make farmers more effective. How can we create um, more yield in the farming spaces? We know as humans, our population keeps growing and growing and it will keep growing. And at the same time, we know um, our farming lands are shrinking and shrinking, and that's not really the right balance that we want to have, right? So at Microsoft, we're looking at this problem and saying, okay, how can we actually use technology and embed in our uh, farming lands, and as a result, we can get more yields from these farms, right? And what we do, and this is usually a costly problem to solve because of the hardware. Because to be able to do that, you have to put sensors around the farms, and those sensors can be pricely because most of those farms are in rural areas. There might not be the right internet connection or speed and such. So there are many different um, layers of this problem that we're looking. There's the hardware level at the IoT, uh, sensors level, and then how these like sensors collecting data, sending it back to the mothership, so to speak. And on top of it, where AI comes into place is like when we start collecting all this data from soil, um, the temperature data, weather data, and all of those things, then how can we actually um, create solutions that can tell us what is the best produce to have on this farm? And what is the most optimal way of creating and increasing the produce in this farm? The other project that is, I think is quite exciting is called Seeing AI. Uh, I believe you should be able to download it on your phones and play with it yourself. So this is an app that we built for uh, visually impaired or blind people. And the whole purpose is like they can actually um, take a picture of something uh, with this app and that and then app actually reads what they're looking at at that moment. It can be as simple as a menu, 
you might be sitting at a restaurant, you have a menu in front of you, obviously you're not gonna be able to read it, so you take a picture of it and then they can, it can just be, uh, uh, talk to you and read you all those uh, words on it. Or it can be looking at something, like if, if I was taking a picture of you today, it would probably tell me I'm standing on a stage and there's like 100 uh, children looking at my direction with a background of uh, the lake uh, in the back end, right? So this is more about inclusion and how can we actually use AI um, to create more inclusive environment for everyone around us. And the third one is, um, you know of Uber, probably you're using Uber already. So one of the problems that Uber was uh, looking to solve with our technology was um, looking at checking their, so once in a while, Uber actually um, asks their drivers to take a picture of themselves during their shifts, right? And the whole purpose of it, so Uber actually knows the driver, the current driver in the car right now is the driver that they did the background checks on and they approved, right? So this person is the trusted person. So it's almost like a multi-factor authentication in some, some way, right? And what they use, they use the Microsoft technology behind it, it's the face detection API. Um, you can take a picture of yourself and then it actually detects if you're the right person to drive your car or not for um, security purposes, basically. So, how can you build these solutions? Um, at Microsoft, because we're a huge company and we are, you might have heard this from many different companies these days, but we're truly looking at the democratization of AI and how can we provide these AI solutions to everyone, okay? And there are many layers of um, experience and expertise required for many different problems. So we're trying to give solutions to everyone. If you're a deep data scientist and um, a researcher in AI field, we have tools and uh, technologies on our Azure platform that you can go in and build your deep learning algorithms yourself, okay? But if, you, if you're new, if you are an application developer, if you're a software developer, you don't really want to um, train a machine learning model, but you just want to have that power of machine learning embedded in your application. Then we have APIs. Uh, I believe we have close to 30 different APIs today that you can see actually here. And they, you can just make those API calls in your code, and then you can start using those technologies yourself. You can easily create, say, that seeing AI app by yourself by using the face detection API that we have. Okay, and there are many different, again, focus areas on that. We're looking at vision, uh, kind of like image detection problems. We're looking at speech, like voice to text, text to voice, uh, language. Can you do like um, machine translation, one language to another language, or can you do text analytics, uh, sentiment analysis, and all those things. Um, so one example that I wanna show you here is the custom vision. And it said customvision.ai. You can go there, it's free. You don't have to pay for it. And you can even just play with it yourself and then see how it works. So the whole purpose of customvision.ai is to give you the power of image classification. What you do, basically, it has a very nice, easy to use web interface. Uh, you create a new project. And then you basically start uploading some images. Today, image classification, if you were to build a solution by yourself, so using deep learning, um, then you actually typically need like say 1,000 images to be able to train a model, right? But in this case, our researchers actually trained a fairly stable model in the back end um, using all the knowledge and the data that Microsoft has and provides you that with the interface. And you only need to upload like 30 images, right? And you can easily even find 30 images on the web, download them if you want to test a couple of things, right? And then you upload some images. Like in this case, you actually see um, some leaves. And honestly, if I look at it with human eye, 
I don't know, they kind of look the same to me. <laughs> uh, even as like a human, I'm not able to differentiate one leaf from the other one. Um, but if you know all of these like um, images are actually from different trees or plants or flowers, you can actually tag a few of those and let the algorithm know with only like a few images. And then, and then basically press the button saying train and then basically trains the uh, algorithm for you and it's specific for your problem, it's specific for your images. And then what it does in return, it actually creates this API um, that you can use for prediction. And then what you do, you just take that three lines of code and then embed it into your application, make that call, and now your application is actually an intelligent application which can start detecting and differentiating um, different images. And here's an example um, how you can use it actually. So this is actually a simple example that one of my uh, team members um, built uh, just for demo purposes. And I was going to demo it to you, but I was like, yeah, I don't know if screenshots are better probably. So in this case, what we're doing is basically using the, um, there's a celebrity face detection API. <laughs> actually. So you can just make that call, as you see, in like, and in this case, you're, you're not even making a call. If you look at this piece of code, you're just including some libraries, and it's actually telling where to find these images, and then it's just like showing which images they're using um, for the detection. And they're using Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, basically. And on top of that code piece, basically, it's showing you how you can um, pass these images to that API. Okay, and then API returns you some results, and then you can basically put that in a vector wherever you're putting it, and then you can just like visualize those images, and it tells you this is Bill Gates, and this is Steve Jobs. Um, so again, as you see, like you can do this kind of like in include intelligence in your applications with maybe like what twenty lines of code, you're able to do that. Finally, um, we have a Microsoft AI school. It's available to everyone. It's for free. Uh, it's online. It's aischool.microsoft.com. If you want to learn more, I know previous um, speakers already mentioned. Um, actually, it was the alumni mentioning about it. Like, there's so many resources out there that you can go and start learning. Um, and again, like AI school that we have is one of them. If you're interested in, just go and um, start building some AI applications. Thank you. So we have some time for some questions. Does anyone have any burning questions for Ozge? Yeah, speak really loud. What are some future plans for Microsoft has with AI? Uh, future plans, I don't know, like honestly, I, as far as I see, and again, like as I said personally, I'm really, really excited about the AI for good uh, projects that we're doing. Uh, I know we work with a lot of not-for-profits and uh, looking at AI solutions, and, and also the societal impacts of AI, right? Like we had the brain pod, and I loved how everybody was talking about ethics and bias and societal impacts of AI. So that's one of the big things that Microsoft is trying to tackle today, because we know if we don't get started with it, it might be too late one day. Um, but other than that, some of the technologies that is, um, AI, I think where we're going with AI is like, it's not gonna be one technology, it's gonna be uh, embedded in many different technologies and using many different technologies. And one of them, um, I'm really excited about cl um, quantum computing. Um, there's still a debate if we're gonna get there or not one day, but quantum machine learning is one of them actually, and I know Microsoft Researcher is actually looking uh, into heavily these days. Um, what do we use to use these technologies? What kind of programming languages? Um, yeah, you can, you can really use any language these days. Um, most typical one is Python. 
Um, if you're looking into learning programming language, I strongly suggest Python. You can do almost anything and everything with Python these days, and it's open source free. <laughs> so let me, let me ask you this question, because we were talking about it yesterday at dinner, and uh, I thought this was a really important uh, lesson for these young people is, so how did you get into AI? Yeah. And, and what if that didn't happen? Kind of go through that story. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, the funny story is like when I started computer engineering as an undergrad degree, that was 1999, um, I did not own a computer. Okay? It's not like I didn't know a programming language. I did not even own a computer. Uh, I was a smart girl. I aced all of my classes in high school, and I got in computer engineering because it was the thing to do at these days. And my first day in the lab, I remember we had the floppy disks. I was looking at the floppy disk. I didn't even know how to insert that floppy disk into the computer. Okay? I was that behind. But I just kept learning, I looked around, learning. I did not really enjoy it, to be honest, till my last year. And my last year, we had to do an honest research, and one of my professors actually pushed this one book in front of me, it was saying neural networks on it. And all of my, we had uh, 60 people in a class. I know, as a matter of fact, 59 kids were doing web apps, because that's what everybody was trying to figure out. Whereas I went ahead and I started reading about neural networks and I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. You are able to combine biology with computer science and math. And to me, it was mind blowing. That's basically how I got into that. And if I didn't have that one professor who introduced me to neural networks, it's just as simple as just providing one book to me and opening all these opportunities. I know I wouldn't be here. Um, I'm an immigrant myself. Um, I came from Turkey. I did my undergrad in Turkey. Um, most likely I would still be in Turkey in, in a bank, um, writing programs in an IT department and most likely hating my life instead of loving what I do today. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Oh, can I go?